today we're going to begin to explore the medium of sequential art. So here we have a three panel comic strip and we're going to be using this as a model as we go forth in this Photoshop project. So I can see that when we look at a comic we read from left to right. So for example the person on the left is speaking, the person on the right is responding. We're going to be using these dialogue bubbles. We're going to be including your name and the date discreetly in the corner of probably the last panel and making sure that you're going to include a title. So here is the template that we're going to be using a uh, four panel comic strip. Here are a few examples of what dialogue bubbles should and should not look like. We're going to primarily be using um, center line text uh, so that it looks a little something like this. And further, we're going to want to maintain a division between um, the text and the characters. So typically the photos are going to be in the bottom half of the comic and text the dialogue bubbles on the top. So here's an example that I made about 10 years ago uh, called Mr. Drozd Tries to Make a New Friend. Do you want to see my Velociraptor impression? Uh, I guess. Roar. What the? Are you impressed? Gee, yeah, that was real cool, weirdo. And so I made this in 2006, and um, this is actually my wife a few years before we got married. So these comic strips are a really nice way to sort of document um, the relationships that you currently have in time so that you can look back years from now and uh, remember them fondly. So here's an, another example I actually just made tonight called How the Mighty, where Matthias says, shh, I just won 128 million in the New York Powerball. As such, our friendship is terminated. And then Justin responds, this isn't a lottery ticket. It's a receipt from CVS. And why were you buying itch cream? It's for a friend. It was for me. So we can see that there's a little bit of a pause illustrated between these two dialogue bubbles. We're going to be playing around with the mechanics, making sure that we uh, include photos in the background, and we'll talk more about that in a moment. You're going to come up with a nice um, title. You're going to want to make sure that you include your name in the date. We'll look at one more quick one. Uh, so here we have an example with a student interacting with, in this case, a superhero. Um, We've got the name, the date, we've got uh, some really nice conflict. And where can we get inspiration if we're having difficulty writing the story? Well, there are seven basic plots, among them overcoming the monster, where a protagonist sets out to defeat antagonistic force, rags to riches, uh, where the poor protagonist acquires things such as power, wealth, and a mate before losing it all and gaining it back before growing up as a person. So I use this as inspiration for the one between Matthias and Justin. Here we've got a quest, a voyage and return, a comedy, we've got a tragedy or a rebirth where um, during the course of the story an important event forces the main character to change their ways, often making them a better person. So you're going to use these basic plots as inspiration for your own comic and we're going to make one really quickly. Um, so first off, no comic should ever start off with hi or hello, nor should the last panel conclude with see you later. Instead, these are going to be sort of just excerpts of conversation. Um, and here, let's 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 start. So here we've got the template. And the first thing that we're going to want to do with this JPEG is unlock the background layer. I'm going to use the magic wand, and we're going to delete the interior layer, making sure that contiguous is checked. Press Command D to deselect. Next, what we're going to do is need to find a background. Um, so I'm going to right click. I'm going to simply copy this image, although you could paste it. Um, or, I'm sorry, save it. Um, but here I'm going to press Command V to paste it, and I'm going to actually need to stretch it out a little bit. And what I know is that this is going to bleed over the edge of these two panels. So what I'm going to do now is switch to the marquee. I'm going to delete the left side and then the right. I'm going to press Command D. I'm going to use, um, I'm going to hold Alt or Option and click and drag to create an identical background or environment for each of the four panels. We're off to a great start. Yesterday um, in class you guys did a really great job um, extracting your photos that we're going to be using for comics. So you're going to then download four PNG images and I'm going to download uh, or open rather a few right now. Great. So, alright here we go. What we can do now because we've got these PNGs is simply use the move tool. We can drag one in and I'm going to drag in the other. So here we have Cameron talking to Gene. And there's a few things that I need you guys to be aware of as we're 
as we're working on this. Okay, so we're going to obviously want to make these um, images a little bit smaller um, so they fit on the page. But let's say for space purposes, right, you want them to be a little bit closer. Well, what I can do is if you're on the same layer and you select the marquee tool, um, you can simply move the image around like that. So hypothetically, if I wanted to um, just grab his shoulder, I could simply use the marquee tool and then the move tool and just grab that component and move it around and now it's still on the same layer. So that might come in handy as you're doing that. So once you're going to drag in, uh, actually what we'll do for the sake of time is let's pretend that we've got uh, four different sets of interactions between Gene and Karen. Uh, they're going to look a little bit like this. Next what we're going to need to do is we're going to add our text and so the person on the left speaks first. Great. Next, what we're going to need to do is create a new layer underneath the text. I'm going to use the uh, elliptical marquee. And what I'm going to do is make sure that um, the add to selection is highlighted because that's going to make it a little, little bit easier. I'm on a new layer, which is really crucial. I'm going to use the polygonal lasso. I'm going to click once twice and a third time I'm going to right click select stroke we've we've done this in class right right click fill filling with white beautiful and now I can uh, go like so you guys are gonna have dialogue bubbles and text for each of the four uh, panels I'm looking for a lot of creativity I'm looking for a lot of uh, humor or maybe you're gonna decide to tackle something serious regardless let's produce something of high quality let me know if you have any questions